What's going on, church family? Hey, I'm here with Talon, and uh, guys. we've been working through the book of Matthew, right? Matthew. Every week we tackle just a couple of chapters. This week we're in Matthew chapter 10, and one of the main reasons of wanting to do this is we've met enough, and we do this all the time now, but uh, we're also working through a book in our small groups and our home groups called One to One Bible Reading, where the basic premise of the book is that God's Word will do the work of the ministry for us. You know, Jesus is the Word of God, right? The Holy Spirit himself wrote the scriptures. So when we get into the Word, it's the Word that transforms us, that renews our mind, right? So we're here before you, and we just want to let you be a fly on the wall in the midst of our discussion. We've already worked through Matthew 10, verses 1 through 23. We learned about how Jesus selected his disciples. We learned about how he chose them to go out into the nation of Israel and to preach the message. And there will be places you've got to shake the dust off your feet in certain homes We've covered the difficult road ahead of the disciples on how they're going to be put before governors and synagogues and be persecuted for Jesus' name's sake. Uh, the message of the Lord is going to even divide families. But now here we are in verses 24 to 39. Um, let's jump into it. So, Talon, why don't you read verses 24 to 31, and then I'll do 32 to 39. All right, here we go. Join us. Get out your Bibles. Let's go. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a slave above his master. Mm. It is enough for the disciple that he become like his teacher, and the slave like his master. If they have called the head of the house Be Beelzebub, mm. Be now that's Beelzebub, Beelzebub. <laughs> how much more will they malign the members of his household? Yeah. Therefore do not fear them, for there is nothing concealed that will not be revealed, mm. or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the darkness, speak in the light. Wow. And what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon, upon the housetops. Wow. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul, mm. but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Mm. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered, so do not fear. You are more valuable than many sparrows. Okay, so we got to talk about this. Yeah, we right? do. What's your initial thoughts about this passage here? Well, first off, um, we went out for a walk to pray, <laughs> and we Just both now. mentioned that verse. Yeah, yep. Mm. Yeah, we, so this isn't staged or planned. This is the first recording we're doing on this video. Yeah. <laughs> so we actually, this is probably the one that we need to make sure we post and everything. Yeah. You know? So we just took a prayer walk here around the church neighborhood. You know, there's two different cul-de-sacs here in the neighborhood. Uh, it was really fun because we just got to praying and my heart went to this verse, but Talon started praying about this verse. Uh, as we were on our prayer walk, and here it comes up in this passage. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Okay, so let's dig into this then. Jesus is off, you know, obviously talking about not being afraid of persecution. He's, he's been saying that for the first 20-something verses. Then we get to verse 26, where he says, Therefore do not fear them. And then he says, There's nothing concealed that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. I'm assuming he's talking about these corrupt leaders and their persecution, right? Then he says, what I tell you in the darkness, what I tell you, at least I'm interpreting it this way, what I tell you in the midst of your persecution, uh, speak in the light. Go out there and, and speak about it, you know. Um, and what you hear whispered in your ear, proclaim upon the housetops. I'm telling you this privately, but go out into that world and share it as well. I think, I mean, to me, 28 is... You got it. I was just That's a you. huge verse. Do not fear those who kill the body, but are unable to kill the soul yeah those who persecute you can kill your physical body but they can't take your soul but fear him who is able to both destroy both soul and body in hell and i don't think that's a i think it's a res it's a different fear yeah that fear a respectful fear is mm -hmm. different than i'm fearing for my life in in this life mm -hmm. but fear god who is able to destroy both yeah yeah, I mean, it's it's like the insinuation is this. One power can take away just your physical life. The other power, you know, if if coming at him with the wrong heart, he can take away both your physical and your spiritual life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, he can kill your soul. Uh, I think that's like the hinges on a door. This verse is a hinge verse. 
He yeah. just got done talking about persecution. Now he talks about the value of life. And Jesus is telling them, look, uh, you know, you need to decide where your life is most valuable. Is your life most valuable in the hands of men? Or is your life most valuable in the hands of God? Which one will you consider more? This is ironic, too, because this Sunday we'll be in Daniel chapter 7. And I'm actually going to preach a part of the message on this very subject. So it's all just coming together, you know. But keep going. This is the one you need to talk about. Verse, verses 29 to 31. So are not two sparrows sold for a cent, and yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. Yeah. Very, all the hairs on your head are numbered. Mm -hmm. God knew yeah. how many hairs on your head. And then 31, don't fear. Yeah. You are more valuable than many sparrows. And to me, that's an important verse mm -hmm. to me because I struggle with self-worth and knowing, knowing I'm valuable and, and this makes it, I mean, the Bible makes it abundantly clear. I'm made in his image and I hold value, but God provides for the sparrows yep. and he'll provide for me because I'm more valuable than the sparrows to him. Let me ask you a question uh, just on the spot. Did you just see a work of God today? Yes. Through his word? Yes, I did. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Here we were just praying about it and now we come across the exact verse. That's, that's pretty amazing. So church family, if you're listening... You know, God not only knows the number of hairs on your head, but you're you're valuable to him. I mean, that's a proof that he cares intimately about you. I don't even know the amount of hairs on on my children's heads, um, but God knows how many are on my head. So that's super. And your children's head. Yeah. And everyone else's head. Yeah. Every exact number. He has no limit to that knowledge. And it's not just like a relationless knowledge. It's a relational knowledge. It's an intimate. Yeah, I care about you so much, I even know this. I study you so much, I even know this. You don't you. even know this yeah. about yourself, but I do. I do, yeah. Amen. Let's end it there. Uh, we'll end there with that part of the discussion. Amen? Amen. All right. Church family, thanks for joining us. We love you so much. We'll see you Sunday. God bless.